You know, in many ways, uh, fear drives our world. It doesn't take long to look around right now. I mean, it doesn't take long at all to recognize that fear is everywhere. Just consider how much fear consumes people. I don't really want to do this to you, but it's important to just identify just how much fear is surrounding our lives. Think of our fear of the future, our fear of the past, our fear of health, our fear of safety, our fear for our safety, our fear of anxiety, fear of loneliness, fear of the known, and also fear of the unknown, fear of self, fear of others, fear of finances, fear of weather, fear of failure, fear of weakness, retirement, fear of old age, and yes, fear of death. Again, fear is everywhere. And then we have the fear of fear itself often. And it becomes such a problem because then we recognize, well, what does fear do to us? It's not good. Fear cripples us. It paralyzes us in multiple ways. Fear kills our faith. In fear, we tend to stop relying on God and start to try to control and rely on selves. Fear robs us of joy. In fear, we become insecure. And with fear, we're filled with anxiety and dread. So just to summarize all of that, fear stinks. It really does. And so it's a problem right now. It's a problem. It's always been this way. So what do we do about this fear that makes us lose out on life, really? Again, the Bible has the answer for this. Uh, one verse among many, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So if that is true, and it is, how do we find victory over fear? Well, enter Psalm 27, which is going to guide us this week as the Bible exhorts us and the Holy Spirit says to you and I right now, fear not. I love when we open up God's word again at this critical time in your life and mine, and now we hear the truth. Psalm 27, let's start at the first verse, verse 1. It says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, so often we speak in terms of referring to the fact that we belong to God. And as those of us saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's absolutely true. We are children of God. But remember then, conversely, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He also belongs to us or he is our father. I love how the hymn says it. I am his and he is mine. So spiritual time out right now, just for a second, just consider this truth. The Lord is my light, David says. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Wow, who needs to hear that today? I mean, who's watching right now? This is your appointed time for truth to renew your mind and to fill your heart with expectation and joy and love to understand right now, wait, in Jesus Christ, the Lord is my light. Yes, the Lord is my salvation. And think of light. Light opposed to darkness. All the metaphors and the imagery found within Scripture. Do you know in the Old Testament, this is the only time the word light is specifically personally associated with God? We have to go to the New Testament where it says that the Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world or he has come to be the light in the darkness to find a parallel. How powerful is that? You ever wonder why children love nightlight so much? My children do. Because a nightlight brings comfort and peace in the midst of darkness. And the Lord God Almighty is your light in the midst of darkness. Again, who is this for right now today? Where you are, the Lord speaks to you again. You do not need to be afraid because the Lord is your light and your salvation. Of whom should you be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold, the refuge, the shelter of your life. Again, nothing to fear. Fear not. Call our prayer lines. We'd minister to you today. Again, in the name of Jesus Christ, be blessed. Amen.